Just Blaze versus The Alchemist, two legendary producers. But what happened when both flipped the exact same sample? Well today we're putting their beats side by side to see who came out on top. You're about to see a side of their genius that's never been shown before. So let's settle this once and for all and find out who sampled it better. In this video, we're going to break down how both of these producers made beats using the exact same sample, the different sampling techniques that they used, and even some ideas that you can use for your own beats. So let's start off by looking at the sample itself. Let him hold you, let him touch you. This is a blues rock sample from 1970 that The Alchemist and Just Blaze used in completely different ways. So first we'll look at The Alchemist's beat. He used the sample on his debut album First Infantry back in 2004 for the beat Hold You Down. Nobody but me. I got a whole gang of niggas, but that's how you got it think. This was one of the most popular songs off of this album, and the making of this beat was one of my favorite things to watch when I first began producing. So let's look at how The Alchemist made this beat. Looking at the sample, there are a bunch of usable pieces. It starts off with this choral singing, which actually gets used as the intro to The Alchemist's beat. Then the sample goes into this piano solo with Al Cooper talk singing over it. Let him hold you, let him touch you. And this is the section that the alchemist uses for his beat. Now at the time the alchemist made this beat, the technique of pitched up vocal chops in your beat was really popular. And that's exactly what the alchemist does with this sample. He starts by pitching it up seven semitones and speeding it up. From here, the alchemist begins chopping the sample up. He makes a few key chops on the vocals within the sample, and he uses these to start off his loop. Now what you might find interesting, a little side note here, is that even though the song is called Hold You Down, the vocal itself doesn't actually say Hold You Down. Take a listen. So here he says Hold You, but if you keep listening, This bit is what the alchemist uses to complete the phrase, hold you down. But as you heard, he's actually saying stand. Some really great sample manipulation here. So after these vocal chops get used for the beat, the alchemist then takes this piece right after the vocals within the sample. He basically decides to repeat this chop over and over again. So we go from this vocal phrase to this repeating instrumental chop. But as you can hear, there is a bit of a problem. We have this really loud, fast moving piano in the left speaker, but nothing on the right side. So this makes the beat feel lopsided and unbalanced. To fix this, the alchemist basically erases everything on the left side of the sample, leaving us with this. Hold you. All of these decisions help make the beat feel more rappable. The vocal chops only get used here and there, and there's no longer an instrument that stands out in a bad way. Then from here, the alchemist creates his own simple bass line that follows exactly what the sample is doing. Hold you. So here I'm using my plugin note grabber on the sample, and what this does is it shows you every single note within your sample and lets you even use them for your own beat. And so if you take a look at the notes here, the loop starts off with a D sharp, then an E, and then a G sharp, and then a C sharp. And so by following these notes, the alchemist easily creates a bass line for his beat. So yeah, I just want to quickly mention that this tool can make it easier to build bass lines for your sample, amongst many other things. Feel free to check it out, the link is in the description box below by the way. Then from here we have the drums that come in, and this is how the main loop for Hold You Down by The Alchemist is made. Hold you. 
So that is how the alchemist used this sample. Next up, let's take a look at what Just Blaze did. He actually used this sample four years earlier for one of the first beats that he ever made for Jay-Z. The song I'm talking about is Soon You'll Understand. You're my best friend's sister, grown woman and all. See, I am around. Now going in, just from listening to this, I was not prepared for just how complex this beat is and how many advanced techniques are used. Let me show you what I mean. Like I mentioned before, the beginning of the sample has this choral singing. And initially, I just thought that Just Blaze looped this part for the beat, but that's not what he does at all. Instead, there's this really thin, quiet note right at the beginning of the sample. And what Just Blaze does is he EQs this single chop to clean it up so it's just the vocal left. Then he takes this single note from within the sample and maps it across his keyboard to build his own pattern. So already this is an advanced technique that you just don't see that often. From here, Just Blaze takes the exact same section of the sample that the alchemist uses. Let him hold you, let him touch you. And he uses this chunk of music to build multiple more layers within the beat. First, he pitches the sample down five semitones. Let him hold you. Then he EQs and filters, so all we're left with is the bass. This gets looped and it's used as the bass line for the beat. From here, he takes the sample, pitches it up seven semitones, and uses the same piano riff that the alchemist uses and puts it at the tail end of the loop. Then he also grabs this choral part of the sample, also pitches it up seven semitones and adds it as yet another layer. But that's not all from here. You'll remember in the main chop that he uses. You can hear it has that hollowed low end to it. Well, this is exactly what gets used as another layer after he pitches it up seven semitones as well. So you can see there's just a lot of impressive amount of layering and small detail within this beat, all taken from the exact same sample to build this really robust loop. But Just Blaze doesn't stop there. He also brings in his own sound into the beat that I believe isn't from the sample, though I might be wrong. We have this high pitched piano like this one here. And this basically follows exactly what that first layer of sample is doing within the beat. So once again, I will use Note Grabber to see the exact notes that are being played within this pattern. And these are the same notes that are used for the pattern that Just Blaze builds himself with an additional layer of notes underneath. Then from here, drums are added in and we have the main loop for Just Blaze's beat. Now before you decide which of these producers sampled this better, how about I publicly embarrass myself and throw my hat into the ring as well against these two legends. Let me try to make a beat using this exact same sample and who knows, maybe I'll end up making a better beat. Probably not, but you can decide. So the first thing I wanna do is focus on a different piece than the Alchemist or Just Blaze used as the main component of their beats. So I'm gonna use that choral section of the main sample here. And what I'll do is try my best to chop it up and piece together a new and different idea. So I feel like there is an idea in here somewhere, but I think it just needs to be improved on. First off, I'm kind of worried that the loop feels a bit too big. So I wanna figure out a way to reduce how much space this takes up. I'll use this simple gating effect to hopefully help solve this problem. Thank you. 
Next, I'll export and use this as a sample to get a better control over it. And my hope is that I can chop this version of the sample up and rearrange it to build something that's a little bit more cohesive. All right, this still feels a bit chaotic, like it's a series of random notes. I think a more solid musical framing will help this idea really come together. So let me do that next. I'll use Note Grabber once again to see what the notes are in this loop that I've built. And this will give me a rough framework that I can use to build an 808 pattern, for example. Then from here, I will add more to this pattern, again, using the exact same notes that I got from Note Grabber as a starting point. And so with this musical backing, I think this idea is starting to actually come together. It feels like there's an actual musical idea in this beat now. But one thing that did jump out to me at this point is that the vocal sample does feel too dominant sitting in that frequency pocket that it's currently in. I would imagine it would get in the way of someone trying to rap over this beat, for example. So I'm gonna pitch it down an octave. Now, while this did help, this creates yet another problem, which is that higher end zone of frequencies is now empty. So I'll use my own sound to fill up the space, but I will try to choose a sound that feels a little bit more balanced compared to that vocal layer that was just constantly playing. Lately, I've been enjoying using harps in my beats, so let's go with this. The reason why I think this is gonna fit a little bit better is because this sound is short and plucky, and so it's not gonna get in the way as much. And as for the pattern, I'm just gonna closely follow what Note Grabber showed me already exists in the sample. From here, I'm gonna add in my drums as well as some small little layers and details. And so here is what we get. So comment down below whose beat is your favorite. Feel free to insult my beat if you want, but just remember, I am a tender little boy. Like I mentioned, you can start your free trial of Note Grabber if you're a sample-based producer. This thing will help you out. Link to that is next to me. Like and subscribe. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Bye for now.